Welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast, where we embrace our needs as moms, we learn to lead ourselves first, then our families, and where we create our own healing from the inside out to find our way to the work we were meant to do in this world. I'm your host, a fellow mom of three and a certified life coach, Lizzie Langston. Hey everybody, what's up, what's up, it's your girl. Okay, if you did not follow me on Instagram, I I gotta toot my own horn here for just a second, but I feel like I created the cutest reel and it was about trauma and it's to Taylor Swift, of course, duh. She's one of my friends. She knows it, she knows it. Her subconscious might know it. So if you just go to at Lizzie Langston, that's me on Instagram, you can check it out. It's so cute. Um, I just posted it and it talks to you. It's going to teach you some of the signs of childhood trauma is what I use the example of, but really just any trauma, how they come up in adulthood um, when they're not addressed. Woo! Speaking of addressed, let's address something. The thing I want to address is that if you haven't heard Starting in just a week and a half now, we've got March 14th, my very first cohort. I'm combining coaching with my postpartum anxiety course. So it's the perfect blend of some structure. We've got the course. We're going to take it a couple, two, three videos at a time each week. We're going for 12 weeks. So you've got the postpartum anxiety course. And then, um, so we'll start with teaching, answering questions, and then we're going to coach for a whole hour too. And that is going to be every Monday night, starting March 14th for 12 weeks, 90 days. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And because it's my first one, it's incredible value. I'm not even just saying that those of you who are already signing up, you know, you're, you're the lucky ones. So go to lizzylangston.com forward slash consult to Um, that's how you, you join us is you book a consult with me. Now I only have so many consult spots and some of you might not be ready for a consult. Maybe you're like, Oh, I just, I'm pretty much sure I want to do it. I just want to, you know, hear her talk about it or something, or maybe you have a couple questions and that's all. And so in that case, I'm holding an info call next Thursday night. So this will be Thursday, March 10th. Um, so a week from today. And so if you want to hop on a little Q and a about my group coaching program, and I'm just going to be teaching, I'm going to be teaching about trauma. I'm literally going to just be answering, answering any questions you have about trauma, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, boundary setting, um, any symptoms. I literally have this huge book and my brain and we are the book and I, (laughs) my brain are really good at intuitively helping women understand if, you know, if you're having painful sex or if your right hip is super tight or your shoulders, so many women have a lot of shoulder stuff or lower back or upper back. Um, if you have pain and you want to just have me, um, look up in my book and also my brain from all my experience and talk to you about maybe what your pain could be surrounding, come join us. It's just a free bonus call. And it's also going to be really informative for those of you who want to possibly join the group coaching cohort that starts March 14th. Oh, I'm so excited. I've been going through my postpartum anxiety course and just like geeking out over how awesome it's all going to be. Okay. Now I probably have a million other things I could tell you, but today I wanted to tell you a little bit more into trauma. I wanted to go a little deeper into the faces of a trauma response. So we've got fight, flight, freeze. Those are the most commonly known ones, but there's a couple others. There is feigning and fawning. And I'm so excited to teach you about these. So let's go through them. And obviously we kind of have an idea of what these are. For example, fighting, like you could get in a fight, but there's other more subtle ways, especially for women, we tend to be more subtle and more passive. And so we're going to talk about, (laughs) sorry, I'm just making myself laugh. We're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Oh wait, I just feel like I was just like a YouTube channel somewhere that I've heard. I'm sure I was. (laughs) Oh wait, it's mine. Just kidding. All right. So fight. Are you ready to to have a fight? Let's not have a fight, but let's talk about how you might fight um, as a trauma response, what this could look like for you in your life. Before I dive in, can I ask one favor of you? Go leave a review on this podcast if you love it. I would super appreciate it. 
and or you can just send one of these episodes to a friend. You never know who out of your friends is depressive because women are really good at hiding it, really freakishly good. And hiding it can be part of a flight or a freeze trauma response. She, she, she could be so traumatized, your friend or you <laughs> could be so traumatized by her own freaking depression and anxiety that has totally blindsided her. She might not be telling her husband the whole truth. She might be locked down, putting on a smile for everyone, you know, but a total freaking hot mess, not like a hot mess in a bad way, but just totally, um, stressed out and trauma traumatized and in a sort of activated nervous system state in her private life and in her body. You just never know. So whether you want to share an episode on Facebook or you want to go leave a review so that it'll help other women find it when they search, I would super appreciate that. Okay. Fight. So when you're in a trauma response, which is an activated state of nervous system specifically relating to um, something like an, oh, time that you had an activated nervous system response in the past. Okay. I just want to let, maybe before we dive in, we should all be clear on what a trauma response is. If you have any questions, go back to episode 242. It's just the episode I published the like the last most recent one, that one will give you a very, very, um, awesome walkthrough of what trauma is. So maybe just go to that one so we can move on in this one. So with a fight response, um, it can be like you start feeling aggressiveness in your thoughts. So maybe somebody's talking and you're just like, oh, she's so annoying. It's just sort of like this um, mode of being where we just want to fight with people. We just are annoyed. We're very annoyed. We're very frustrated. That can actually be how we show up from a place of trauma. And a really good indicator to know if this is a trauma response for you, because by the way, Trauma response can be something. It can be, we can have tr chronic trauma responses. What I mean by that is your nervous system might be so dysregulated that it's always dysregulated and it's honestly all you've ever known. And so you might confuse this fighty trauma response with your personality or with your family of origin and like your guys's culture as a family or just your identity. Maybe you're like, yeah, I'm just a real biatch like that. I just, I like that, you know? But the truth is like, that can actually be a sign of dysregulatedness, a dysregulated nervous system. Okay. Now you can keep any parts of your identity and your personality that you want to. I just think it's important and really useful to be aware of what is trauma and what is our true selves. And I will say that what I want to compel you to come do my program for is because that's what's waiting for you on the other side. As you delve into this work, your true self without dysregulation, not like you'll never have it again, but getting, that's my, my hope with the 12 week program is that even if you just get a big glimpse that you touch down into a, really being calm in your body, embodied calm in your mind and experiencing life in a calm way. And I don't mean calm, like boring, because I was just talking to one of my clients, passion, playfulness, and purpose are the three P's of postpartum that I made up, but I see them across the board. This is what women want. This is what we're craving. I know it's what I craved more passion, more playfulness, more purpose, everybody. So come join us in the freaking 14, March 14th. <laughs> I keep wanting to say 14 weeks. It's not 14 weeks. It's 12 weeks. Who knows? Maybe I'll throw in a bonus too. Because it's the first cohort, I will do anything to get y'all results. I will. I will. I'll bend over backwards as long as my health is intact and my family work-life balance is good. I will do just about anything. So um, you really want to be in this group. It's going to be awesome. Come join us. Okay. Have I said come join us enough? Good. If you if you need a reminder, just go to lizzylangston.com forward slash consult. Okay. Or join our info call next Thursday night. And in order to get the info for that, you want to be on my email list. And so to get on my email list, you just go to lizzylangston.com forward slash freebie, F R E E B I E. Put your name on the form. You will get my freebie, which is a postpartum anxiety and depression guide. I think it's awesome. And you'll make sure that you don't miss any emails about my group cohort starting and the info call. All right, friendy. So Let's go to the next one. Oh, no, no, no. Let's hold on a little bit more here with fight nervous. Um, sorry, 
aggressiveness in your demeanor, aggressiveness in your thought. Also, you have a hard time focusing because you really just want to attack. You can be kind of attacky. I'll give you an example. I was talking to a friend and I happened to know about this friend that she was going through some really tough um, marriage stuff. Okay. And so I remember I called her just about a random little thing and she like was snippy at me. And I was like, Whoa, but I knew, I knew what was going on. I knew that she was really in a wrestle. And so I didn't bite back at all. I didn't make anything of it. And I also gave her a bunch of space. Um, but that was her, she was, she was in a trauma response. Like if she were here listening to me, she'd be like, Oh hell yes, I was. (laughs) She was in a trauma response. Okay. In her life and in her body. And so she was fighting. It was fighty. So it doesn't even mean that you're fighting with the person that caused the trauma. That's the crazy thing. (laughs) This is why it's so important to know about what our trauma is and to be able to identify it is because it could literally be your own trauma that you're not seeing could be why your marriage is funky right now or why you're constantly snapping at your kid. Um, So it's just so, so, so calming and empowering and reassuring and nurturing to be able to see our own trauma. All right. And I want to turn you into your own trauma doula. You're going to be a doula girl. You sign up for doula class. <laughs> it's like this 12 week course is going to turn you into an emotional healing doula for yourself. And then you can maybe go do it for others. Some of my clients have become coaches at school. All right. The next one. So fight. We got that flight. This kind of goes without being said, but wanting to run away now, not physically necessarily, although that's possible, but also cancel culture, baby. (laughs) Just canceling. Like, nope, she's out of my life. Nope. They're out of my life. Nope. I'm not talking to her anymore. This can be a sign of dysregulated nervous system. This is a response that comes from you not being aware of seeing and being able to calm your own trauma in your body. And there's no, nothing wrong with that. You don't need to be like down on yourself about it. You don't need to judge yourself about it because coming out of trauma is a skill. It literally is like doula class. Like you got to learn how to do this. So don't judge yourself. I don't know why I keep talking to Ebonics, but it's awesome. It's fun. Um, I think I'm a lit up. I'm really passionate about this because I'll just share a little bit of my personal life here. I recently experienced a trauma response, came with some, a lot of anxiety, and then also some, some intense depression. Because I am the postpartum coach, I'm also a human too, but because I've done a lot of work with other women and because I've, I've do led myself before through anxiety and depression and I, I luckily know how to handle it, but it still was really hard and it was still scary. And I, I sometimes was like, am I ever going to get out of this? And, and, um, anyway, and one of my go-tos during that time was, was lighting and boom up and leaving a situation, uh, multiple situations. So I know that this is one of mine is flight. And so I just want to give it to you. It's possible that it could be, um, avoiding sex, right? Could be a flight response wanting to leave. Oh, I got to go. Sorry. I'm too busy. Busyness. Oh my gosh. Busyness. Busyness is a, tr- can be, I mean, it, de- it depends on context, I guess, but Busyness can be a trauma response. What I mean when I say a trauma response, okay? Because when we think trauma response, we think like of what happened and people and memories, but really it's less about what happened and people and memories. And it's more about your nervous system and how is it dysregulated or is it regulated? Are you operating from the sympathetic nervous system where it's kicked into gear and it's activated? Or are you living your life in your parasympathetic nervous system? Now, Every day, even if you don't have any trauma and nothing's wrong, you're going to ebb and flow out of, you know, from the the sympathetic to the parasympathetic. That's normal. But where most of us are in our lives is we are living in adrenal, adrenal, sorry, adrenal fatigue. Your adrenals are what produces like all of your fight, flight, freeze hormones, your cortisol. And we are like living with those completely juiced out. They're max, they're, they're, they're empty because we're constantly dysregulated and we're constantly, um, not addressing trauma, not seeing our own trauma, being affected by it and not even knowing it. And it taxes our nervous system. And guess what? I hate to say this, but your nervous system is the foundation of all of your health, your skin, your muscles, your bones, your blood, your freaking hair. So literally like your health and your life, you can birth an entirely new person 
from getting you knowing how to regulate your nervous system. I'm actually doing a nervous system reboot right now, like a 21 day thing. I haven't even started it. And it's like five days in, I'm pretty sure they sent me a few emails, but I don't care. And they told me they were like, just so you know, go at your own pace. Like really though, the, some of the most successful people go at their own pace. Now I'm just chatting. All right. So we've got fight. We've got flight. Now let's talk about freeze. Okay. Freeze isn't necessarily not doing anything. It's doing something and forgetting if you wanted to or didn't want to. Um, it's, it's maybe you had, you were like, maybe you're going through a separation or divorce or something and you had promised that you're not going to get back together with your husband. And then there he is, he comes to your house one afternoon and he starts kind of kissing you and you just like go with it. That's freezing. Okay. You freeze. Freezing doesn't mean you're not doing something. It mean it could mean that you're, co- you're, um, not coercively cause that person might not be coercing you, but you basically stop making decisions. You stop advocating for yourself. I hear about, I help, um, I help women understand how they froze during birth trauma. A lot of what, what happens in the labor and delivery room in hospitals, but it can happen in home births or birth centers too, um, is we will freeze. So our OB, you know, will say, Hey, I think we need to do an episiotomy to get this baby out. And, you know, you really didn't want one, but you just freeze because your system just like jolts. And so you don't speak up and you just say like, yes, doctor, whatever you want, doctor, like just do whatever doctor. And, um, you don't say, well, well, what are the pros and cons of that? Well, what's the healing like for that? Like you don't get in with your brain and like really, you know, well, I, I told you I didn't want that. So what's another option? I I'm not okay with that. You know? So right? Do you see the difference? So freezing is like, uh, okay, whatever you say, (laughs) robot mommy mode. Um, and it's super sad because then our body just takes all the trauma for us. And, um, anyway, but the beautiful news is we can regulate later. So let me tell you a little secret. I'm going to throw a little secret nuggets in here. As I do this episode, the beautiful part of trauma. Okay. For as much as, as there is dysregulation, the beautiful part is that it's so easily like, what do I want to say here? What I want to say is that you can address your trauma at any stage in life. You're never too old and it's never too late ever. Um, and the sooner you do, obviously the cooler, because there's like less repercussions, but at the same time, I truly believe that everyone's on the exact journey they should be on. And if that means they're making decisions from a trauma response or they're in relationships from a trauma response, so be it. That being said, I am an advocate, like you'll see in the show notes of this episode or actually last episode, 242. I'm on a mission to help all the moms and all the women become trauma informed. Okay. That was my, I'm not even deleting that part. That was my baby. He's four. And he came in to tell me that they got new graham crackers. Um, and they don't taste yucky. They taste a little bit bad, but mostly good. And they're really good. (laughs) So just so you know, All right. So we got fight and then we've got flight and then we got freeze. Let's talk about the two more nuanced parts of, um, trauma. Should I give them to you right now or should I make you wait? Just kidding. All right. I'll give them to you. We've got feign and fawn. (laughs) This is so fun. I just learned about these not that long ago and I've had so much fun looking back at my childhood, my adolescence, my first decade of being married. Cause we will have our 10 year anniversary at the end of this year and seeing how I've done these. So fawning is basically people pleasing. Um, it is inauthentic, but it comes from a fear of like, for me, a lot of times around men, there's a fear of their reaction. There's this priority I used to give to their emotional comfort. And so I would take on stuff that I didn't want them to feel so that they could be comfortable it's basically like, remember Mary and Martha in the Bible? So Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. Her nervous system was calm. She was in a sympathetic nervous system response. And Martha was parasympathetic. She, or sorry, I got those mixed up. She was parasympathetic. Mary was parasympathetic and Martha was in the sympathetic, right? She was activated. She was like, hustle, hustle, hustle. The savior's here. Jesus. Oh my gosh. It's, it's the Messiah. I got to make him dinner and I got to clean the house right? And she was missing the best part about living at the same time the Savior lived, which was hearing him teach. So this is called fawning. It's that very female type behavior, and it is more common in women, this fawning response. Um, And I think it's really unique to women. I don't know that men do this. It's possible. I definitely think it's possible. So I'm not going to say that they don't, but 
I think that you want to watch out for this with yourself. How I have fond even in my marriage before is, um, you know, just not speaking up if I'm not comfortable with something, um, saying yes, even though I wanted to say no. Um, and then I, the people do this all the time. Like, or if you get asked to do like a calling at church, but you just really aren't feeling up for it, you, you, um, it's specifically you're fawning at your own expense. Okay. So there's, there are negative things happening for you that you're not able to speak up because you're in a trauma response and there can be trauma responses that go on for a long time, a, like a lifetime. I mean, we're talking nine years and the question is why, why then if you can just do it your whole life, why, why work on the trauma response and cutting the cycle? Number one, quality of your health. That's probably the big one. Also number two, quality of your authenticity in your relationship with yourself, really the quality of access that you have to the real you, right? When we talk about passion, playfulness, and purpose, I was actually telling my um, client, I was like on a scale of one to 10, if you rate each of those, how passionate are you in your life? How playful are you in your life? How much purpose do you feel? And then like, if you look, let's say you're like a six and a seven and a seven. So all of that, all of those like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 points out of 30 is the trauma you still got to do because you want to have like all of those can be at a 10. They can be, you could actually have a life that is that passionate and playful and purpose. Now I will say that it doesn't always go linear. Like it doesn't always just get bigger, 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 more passionate, more playful, more purposeful life events come in, we get triggered. So there it's like a more of a rigmarole. It's like a little roller coaster. I feel like it comes in batches and phases. So don't try to make it too neat and tidy, but anyway, just giving you a glimpse as to what's possible. So that's fawning and look it up on the internet. If you want to learn more about it, it's fascinating. And then feigning, here's what I know about feigning is that as women, especially again, we tend to turn to the left, turn to the right, and either compare ourselves with others or over solicit advice, over solicit direction. It's basically the collective trauma that we all share as women after the burning times and the witch trials where women were persecuted and, and attacked for their intuition, for their wildness. We have this learned trauma of not being connected to our body, of disassociating with our body, of turning off our body, not being in there, not really being connected in there. And as I speak this to you, I want to tell you, I am the most connected I've ever been to my body. And it's because I learned about trauma. I identified mine and I've been able to attend to it and it hasn't been easy. Okay. It hasn't been easy and yours isn't going to be easy, but neither is all of the symptoms we feel when we're in trauma. I'm literally pulling up my Instagram reel. Let me read you the ones that come up as I recorded this reel, all of the things in adulthood that we experience in trauma. So trauma responses in adulthood, like the symptoms. (laughs) Whoa. Okay. I'm going to read them to you. That was the music. So randomly being afraid of people, things, or experiences, anxiety and depression, obviously painful sex, shallow friendships, right? When we are always fighting or flighting or freezing, it's hard to have really good friendships. And then also my, um, marriage stuff, chronic migraines and headaches, um, sleep troubles, not asking for or receiving help. That's one I'm still working on. That again is like bred into us as women, um, having like these little things where you're really afraid of something and it doesn't make sense and you don't know why. And your friends and family like make, might make fun of you for it and laugh about it, but you, you are genuinely terrified. So that can be trauma as well. And dysregulation in the immune, uh, in the nervous system, you can have food sensitivities crop up. So for me, my gluten intolerance just is a lot better now. I've learned so much through it. I'm actually really grateful for the whole process. Um, and food intolerances can be a response to trauma. They were the beginning of my big trauma response that's lasted for a long time, but it's like, it doesn't have to consume your life when you do this work, right? Like you're just going to be there a week, every Monday night, you're going to take an hour and then you're going to go process it all and, you know, see your life a little bit differently and be a little different. And then you're going to come back the next Monday night. You're going to take an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Right. And so it's not like it has to shut you down and make you into this, um, like, I don't know, crazy, crazy, like mom person that is exploring trauma. You, you can be, you can actually have more fun, 
passion, playfulness, and purpose as you explore trauma. So come join us in the 12 week program. If you want to, if that feels aligned, um, you can come to the info call, get on my email list to hear about that, to have the link to register. And we'll see you in the next podcast episode. I really love you guys. And I am here for you to help you however I can. You can always email me, lizzie at lizzielangston.com. We'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hey, Lizzie here. I've helped dozens of postpartum moms just like you to manage their postpartum anxiety and deconstruct their postpartum depression. It's really easy for me. So if you're ready to feel better, I know the way. Let's chat on the phone. Set up a time by going to lizzielangston.com forward slash consult. It's pretty simple and I will be calling you soon.